Hi. <laughs> Can you hear me if I don't use the microphone the whole time? No. No. Damn it. <laughs> I hate microphones. It's the layout. Dreaming about poetry is like eating a plate. Unsure whether ink would quench me, I ate my notebook. There were people watching as I ate my own neck by taking off my head and pointing it down, but it was obvious that could, this could not really be, and so I reconvened as much as a poet can. The poem that eats glass is written in red. The poem I drink is the one with the verbs that light up the nouns, washes down every essay. The poem is a liquid like glass. Does the poem dream? You're goddamn right the poem dreams. Poet heed my call. The poet palpates my liver. My liver is a poem. A poem dripping vinegar and blood. The poet takes a bite and so I kiss him on the mouth. Waking from the dream, I chew on the liver, my teeth black with bile. And I am the poem that dreams of glass. I am the poem that dreams of a crunching sound, and I am the poet that dreams the poet's breath. Um, thank you, Bear Deluxe. Uh, thank you to all my fellow readers and uh, everyone for coming. Thank you. Um, it's true, I have a book coming out in November. It's called Mental Hospital. It's about being in a mental hospital. Um, so I'm gonna read the one of my three poems that didn't make it into the magazine that I submitted, I thought it was the best one. <laughs> and then I'm going to read one of them from the magazine. So this is called Bitter Cherry. Sword ferns cut a steady rhythm in the stony shade. Faltering day, forest park. Late rising, my fascistic foot groans low, pathetic and bogged. Thinness between the real and ideas, as English ivy's Nazi onslaught crumbs the bark of old generals to chaff, dries the damp green to slump. Heel spur, muddy step, ample though my stretches be, I endear myself to podiatry. Beg of the doctor a sweeter poultice, a more aggressive Vicodin. Stitch me up for the game, Doc. Bandage this bitter cherry against cold and cramp. I crumple a paper birch into leafy spurge, a surging taproot. Yellow my wet, sod skin with the rushing spread of invasion's flattery. See, even though it's killing me, this organism wants me. And everyone wants to be wanted, you know? Wants a nettle sting, if only for calamine. Wants a testy look, if only to be seen. Wants to fall down the hill while exploring Forest Park that this handsome hiker might kneel down to appease me, to wrap me, my wounds in sweet, dry grass. Fukushima Oceanside. I would move into this cottage, let years slip like oysters. At dusk each day, I would walk the rock tunnel by the waves, stand at the wonky mouth, my lousy posture in buggy silhouette. Cynic that I am, I would learn to be light with myself and with others, my thoughts in frantic flight. Isotopes bombard the mind into something new. Bad news come from over the Pacific, come riding the currents with turtles and warm. On a rainy day, you can see for never. <coughs> On missing being young. Little clench of apple core bitten through. Fibrous rub on tooth illicit shiver. Goosebump neck crawl. It's not as if I'm almost dead yet. Crippled feet, torn fasci, missing puzzle piece chewed by the dog. The whole picture's fucked by one mangled inch. Hobbled. A shopping cart with one wonky wheel. The harder push, the more I wobble. This shortcut passes cardboard. Cat bones, patterned in detritus. There be demons here. 
Muddy needle, ashes, cans, bag overhead, shopping bags. See, it's not that the universe is expanding into pre-existing space. Space itself is expanding, pushing galaxies apart. Also, my groaning eye, macula, unknitting sight from sight, browning banana, empty space. Blowing on cold coals, the room is dark. We shuffle, sweaty palms held out, and when we touch, it will be a kind of prayer. I have traveled countless miles not knowing who you would be when I arrived. Advice of the mental patient to God. Mute thou thine inchoate flowers, like brambles that sing and subject to fits these buds in a riot of bees did bloom. But the last time I even saw a bee, he was weakly circling like a one-footed duck on the brickwork, <laughs> on the brickwork ground made and not grown. That day an oil-black fractal cracked the sky and it has spread ever since. So round up the idea of bees. You best commit to mind what impressions you can. Accept the colony's collapse. What is made of meat can only die. Who or what will eat that meat will wait till after with a little luck. Seasonal affective disorder. Does anybody else have that? Seasonal shift as state of mind, winter has quieted sight. Like an empty desk and ashes, ashes we all call home. Perhaps I think some sex could fix me. So when I see a handsome man on Max, I unzip my pants and say quid pro quo. <laughs> Later at home, the disaster of my life, you'd think I would learn the moldy dishes. I, in the shade of a blanketed window, fleece the field. The end of me goes bang, whimper, bang. Oh my god, moaned morning me, though it is melodramatic to peel my skin and show you salt, I must. Feeling obligated to cry. <coughs> the moment is slit and gutted, its skin pinned up on a more impactful past example. You are sitting across a table for two from no one worth mentioning, intestinal swirl of cream and coffee. At the reception, there was an ice bird, ostensibly a swan. Someone sawed and chipped until it showed, like anger that melts into grief and always, always paperwork. Funeral flowers are selected to die not long after the casket is closed, fully bloomed and soon to droop. On the bus that day, you stepped in lube, cracked your kneecap, called back to the body by ferocious violence, and you still just looked away. Uh, three Quick Pieces, Modern World Edition, one. <clears throat> I've never performed any of these before, by the way, so if it's really bad, that's why. <laughs> one. The whole side, the whole building. Chris cuts steel flats, trailing whoosh, run, motherfucker, run. The fire and the bloom, water rushes over the seawall, apertures, predators' pupils click and whirr, chuff and chuff, forward track, try to drive in the outgate and the spikes shred. After, flags are jammed into debris, inspirational song, gray, whatever. In a week of digging through it, the biggest piece of a person I found was a finger. Two. I pictured a kiss like on VJ Day, the nurse and the soldier in Times Square dipped low. No, not unrealistic, wish fulfillment, escapism, rather buildings coming down. Find your happy place. Really? Imagine the heat, men out on the street, 14th September, white candles with tinfoil drop catchers, at work Cassandra's selling beaded flag pins, at a coffee shop an angelic girl strums a guitar, whispery, singing high. I read poems. The strongest steel cannot forever hold back the ancient flood of rage. Three. Jesus fucking Christ, this is a concerted effort. Sandra, are you there? We have planes. Remain calm or people will get hurt. Dead air. It's hard to put into words, and maybe one doesn't need to. We're now receiving word. 9.58 a.m. We're young men. We're not ready to die. We're looking in. We're overlooking the financial center. Three of us. Two broken windows. Oh, God. Oh! I spent like a month and a half watching archival 9-11 footage last year, and that was the result. So, I don't recommend that, by the way. <sighs> a 
and the mountains became a dam as the oceans boiled over cacophony. In a plume, in a plume, in a meaningful plume, all our petty chalkboard scratches flounced in a plume. Undone. A microwavable truck stop hamburger's plastic pouch holds its shape. We are formed by the things that stretch us out. Some emptinesses are noteworthy for holding the shape of what formed them. Oh, holy whatever. <laughs> by the end of the hour, Autumnal is a word that can refer to an event or a way of life that is in its final phase. So wintry, then, does that hold for our world? How it could be so hot and so wintry. In the June of this October, picture the sun growing in intensity until we melt, but not like ice, Cronenberg-like, see? We puddle, coagulate into one another. We are a fleshy ooze, hairy-toothed, carpeting the former ground. Only skin now, only flesh. Thresh and tear, cracking ground, quake and rumble, oh, oh. 2,000 years ago, there were learned men who assured their students the world was nearing its end. Soon we die in droves. A black tooth spat on asphalt, a jeweler's loop examining a bone, carcass, carrion, melodrama, sigh. With the curtain ready to drop on this third act, I flag down a nurse, nab a PRN, gnarl a finger in the pill grip. The other kids behave as if I were a mildly retarded and majorly amusing neighbor, a Faulknerian idiot man-child. I slide the card, I enter the code. The world is nearing its end. I went really fast for how much stuff I have. So I have one more thing I'm going to read. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Um, this is a little lyric essay I wrote, and it's called On Anger, and uh, I hope you like it. I'm told that anger is a secondary emotion. That is, if you dig back through its thick, scratchy mass, rather like conscious brambles, you will invariably find some other cowering child of a feeling. Why have you been beating that child into such submission? I'm so angry, I'm always so fucking angry, you know? My sadness is screaming, look at me, don't hide me behind them. Oh, my child, would that you could understand. By turning our emotions into ideas, into little people, it is possible we might enable ourselves to handle them more completely. So says terrible health self-help literature. Oh, 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 it was a long, long clawing back to awake and or light. We each and all had dabbed our eyes in charcoal, the remnants of a horrible sacrifice. What is real, and why are we so concerned with it? Part of being alive is that you pretend there's such a thing as awake. So what does that have to do with anger? Well, it might be a bit silly to get so worked up when the dream and its waking counterpart will both <laughs> dissolve into salt and smoke. And when its hazy wisp is spritzed on soil, there will never again grow anything green. Dark eyes as oubliette, absolution flies, flies off in the palm of a crow's claw. You will never, ever catch it. What chance you may have once had at undoing this, what light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, dramatic, oh, the shame. Love the green is all we ever wanted, oh, keep us and keep us. I know it's a choice, this anger. I know I can act rather than react. I know that I could think, could peel the onion to its core, which I could bury at the base of the trunk of a willow in a swamp. But I also know I'm still angry. Thinking one's way to right feeling is much, much more easily written than done. Easier written than said, bleed, blood, bled. Absent what invisible hand propelled me from my bed this morning, I will be a tiny mound of used matches and chicken bones when dark rolls around. Crouch down naked at the end of the world, shaving my face with a sharpened old chicken bone. Making sense out of senselessness, I looked at the TV along with everyone else, and what I saw was shocking. But the news anchors were shocked, at least in part, on my behalf, on all of our behalves. And for a time, they said what we should think, until with the collapse, even they fell silent for a bit. And so did we. And if some of us muttered and swore beneath our breath, it wasn't as if the various fucks and holy shits really added up to speech. When you wake up from a seizure, the inside of your nose and head feel and smell like burnt fillings. 
a slip of skin and dull eyes wisping down a hall. Amplified across time, this mouse beneath my skin is gnawing my humerus with its bone-chipped teeth, sends a zap through my brain every two to three seconds. My molars grind sparks like a hard bite of cert to strangle anger from out my flesh, to wring it out, a rag dripping vinegar and blood. I have bent myself against a version of time that is cumulative, brick upon brick, building from out the sequence of days a monument to shame and sad. It takes a lot of eating, many steps. A seed blows along on a hot breeze and catches in your soil. You don't notice it at first, this black bud, but it vines out towards your heart, and on its way, it eats and eats. It's poisonous sap unto the warmer thoughts you once had. So, I long to flens the skin from off this anger, to bleed it out, to paint my cheeks red, to shimmer like the rain on a grackle. I can blow breath to suck calm. I can learn to ride the approaching waves, a sloop on a slurp of the high black sea. Listing, I, little sleepyhead, it's time to let this anger go. It is time to let this anger go. Thanks, everybody.